The wait is finally over. Mountaineer football 1988 is finally here. Arguably the most anticipated season in West Virginia University's football history. Hello again, everyone. I'm Tony Caridi, joined by former Mountaineer John Garcia. And we look forward to bringing you all the play-by-play -play action of today's season opener. Don Nealon looking to become the school's all-time winningest coach against his alma mater, the Bowling Green Falcons. You know, John, everyone's been talking about this season for the Mountaineers. They're going to have to remember one thing. You can never overlook an opponent, especially a team like Bowling Green. Tony, that's, a, that, that's an excellent point because these are tough Ohio kids. Bowling Green is noted for going out and getting the 220-pound uh, individual who's very strong and, and really a heck of an enthusiastic player. Coach nealon has been around the block a few times. He's been on the other side of Bowling Green, and there's no way that he's going to let that happen today. He pulled off some big upsets as the head coach of Bowling Green. Teams like Syracuse, Brigham Young, and Purdue fell to Nealon while he was with the Falcons. So he's been stressing one game on the schedule, and that's against Bowling Green. What can you expect to see? Well, the Falcons have experience at quarterback and their two receiver positions. Rich Dakin is their quarterback. John, what can we expect to see? Uh, Dakin, from my discussion with the, co with the coaches, is a very good quarterback. Good arm, average speed. What we'll probably see is the ball somewhere in the, in the air, somewhere in the center of 40 or 50 times today. In the scouting reports that West Virginia has watched, We've only seen two sweeps. So what we're going to see is a lot of isolation, sprint draw, because they have those, do, those two big fullback, tailback combination, 225 pounds, 230 pounds. So I anticipate a lot of, a lot of isolation, sprint draw, and rock'em, sock'em football, Tony. The anticipation level is at an all-time high. West Virginia against Bowling Green as the 1988 season is underway at Mountaineer Field. Welcome back to Mountaineer Field in Morgantown. Over 50,000 on hand for West Virginia and Bowling Green. The season opener for 1988. The ceremonial coin toss taking place at midfield. Bowling Green has won the toss. You know, John, Don Nealon came to this program in 1980. He had a rebuilding job to do, and it seems as though the rebuilding effort has come to a, an all-time high. This year, 15 separate polls have ranked West Virginia in their top 20. One, of, one going as far as ranking West Virginia as the number one team in the nation. That was Newsday Magazine, and of course, Bino Cook ranked the Mountaineers number one in a nationally televised feature earlier this week. And so, as mentioned, the anticipation going into this season uh, has never been seen before. There's a look at Major Harris, who a lot of the preseason hope is put upon his shoulders. And why not? What a tremendous freshman season Harris had. Named the freshman quarterback of the year by Sporting News. Tony, it's kind of ironic that uh, Coach Nealon's record here at West Virginia is very similar to his record at Bowling Green. Here at West Virginia, he's 58, 35, and 1. His nine years at Bowling Green, he was 53, 35, and 4. And both, both of the staffs are friends. And uh, Coach Perry, who coached uh, Mo Ankeny and Coach Nealon at Bowling Green. So it just should be a lot of fun. Fun it is, and the Mountaineer fans are on their feet. Bowling Green won the toss, and they have elected to receive Reggie Thornton is the deep man for Bowling Green. Charlie Bauman, the senior from Erie, Pennsylvania, is ready to get it underway. They're standing on their feet here at Mountaineer Field. Bauman's kick is a short one, taken by the up man at the 12-yard line, and he will be called dead right to right. One thing you'll notice this year, Tony, is that Charlie will be kicking from the middle of field. Coach Wallace, who is in charge of the special teams this year, is going to put the ball in the middle field. That way, the kicking team has the option of kicking that ball left or right. Scott Lindsay was the up man taking that kickoff and could not catch his footing. And he's down at the 12-yard line. So the Falcons will start off with poor field position. Rich Dakin is their quarterback, number 11. Junior out of Cairo, Ohio. Across the front, it's a young offensive line for Bowling Green. First play of the game goes to the tailback, Mike McGee. Chris Parker, the only returning defender upon the front line for West Virginia, there to make the stop. That's exactly what West Virginia has to do, Tony. Don't give these kids any confidence. Shut them down early and, and go through the game and keep punching as much as we can. 
No gain on the play. It'll be second down and ten. Falcons will split the backs on second down. They had started off the game in the I formation. Back in with his first pass. That ball pops loose, incomplete. Looking for the tight end, Kyle Hockman. And on the defensive coverage, Daryl Whitmore. A red-shirted freshman out of Front Royal, Virginia. You know, Daryl's our great talent, Tony. He's been drafted twice by the Toronto Blue Jays. And he's kind of in the mold of free safety of the West Virginia in the past, Timmy Agee and Jerry Holmes. Third down and ten. And the Falcons send out double receivers. Ron Hurd and Mo Ankney. Whistle blows and the officials have called timeout. Officials comes over towards the West Virginia sideline. Talking to Don Nealon. Apparently they've got a problem with the play clock down in the far end zone. What we'll see today out of, out of Dakin is a lot of five route, five route receivers. And uh, the majority of his passes ha have been out in the flat. And so we should the see. The 25 second clock is not operating. We will take it on the field. So you just heard it. 25 second clock will be operated on the field. They had that same problem during one of the scrimmages back in August. And apparently it has not been uh, completely fixed. So they'll keep the 25 second clock. The Mountaineers with a chance to make their first big defensive stand. It is third down and 10 from the 12 yard line. That's exactly the spot where Scott Lindsay fell to his knees on the opening kickoff. Back in with over 3,400 yards in his first two seasons at Bowling Green. Pressure is on. And back in. Dropped to the ground by Ronaldo Turnbull. The outside linebacker from St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. He's the Mountaineers' designated pass rusher, and you can see why. Six feet, five inches tall, 234 pounds, John. He's got the perfect athletic ability to pursue that quarterback, and he got all of Dak in there. That's going to be one of Coach Shaw's objectives, is go after the quarterback and don't sit back on our heels. Chris Shale, transfer out of Tennessee, bottles that kick. The ball is loose, and a touchdown for the Mountaineers. Willie Edwards. Talked to Coach Wallace this week, and he said that on punt returns, they're going to give a 10-man rush every time to try and put more pressure in the punter. And I'll be darned if they didn't make a big play. It took the Mountaineers just one minute and 17 seconds to get on the board. It was a bad snap. Willie Edwards right on top of that ball. Daryl Whitmore was in there on the pressure for West Virginia. He made the contact with the punter's shell. The extra point attempt by Bauman is good and West Virginia leads it seven to nothing. 13.43 to go here in the first quarter of play. Well, the deep snap man for Bowling Green is Scott Beckley. He's been doing it now for three seasons and on that particular snap, he just didn't get it to shell in time. Had the ball bobbled. Willie Edwards came to pounce on the football. Good pressure in from the corners. West Virginia alertly made the contact. As soon as that ball is loose, they can make the contact with the punter, and that's what they did. And Edwards jumps on it to give West Virginia the 7 0 lead. Anytime that punter stands in the end zone, he is always a little bit edgy. Uh, maybe with a 10 man rush, he did get a little nervous, and it did cause the bad snap. So the Mountaineers take the early lead, and we were talking at the onset that Bowling Green emotionally has to come into this game and has to play well just to tell themselves, yeah, we can play with these guys. That's exactly what they didn't want to happen right there. That's right, Tony. The more confidence you give these, these Ohio players and it goes into the fourth quarter, it would be a dogfight. What, what we needed to do was go in and shut them down early. Charlie Bauman ready to kick it off again. As mentioned, just one minute and 17 seconds into the game, Mountaineers on the board. Almond's kick this time, a line drive into the end zone, and it won't be returned. 
That was Reggie Thornton back there. Bauman's first kick was rather short coming to the 12-yard line, but this one will be brought back out to the 20. This copyrighted broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by West Virginia University through its Mountaineer Sports Network solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express written permission of the Mountaineer Sports Network is prohibited. The announcers on this broadcast are employed by the Mountaineer Sports Network. References to products by the announcers are paid commercial messages. So the Bowling Green Falcons will try it again. First down and 10 from the 20-yard line. They had no success, losing six yards on their first possession. Dakin, incomplete. Looking over there for his split end. Ron Hurd, Alvoid Mays in on the coverage. Mays is one of two new starters in the West Virginia defensive backfield this season. Came in last year as a red-shirted freshman from Pratt Community College and he has earned himself a starting position at the left cornerback position. The other new starter is Darrell Whitmore, who was in on that block of the punt that brought West Virginia their first touchdown. Second and 10 from the 20. And a big hit there by Chris Parker. Ball carrier was Mike McGee and the Whitehall, Pennsylvania native. Chris Parker was right in there. Parker West Virginia in their base defense, Tony, and he's just a tough kid. He's a 400-pound bench presser, and he's a legitimate pro prospect. Parker said before the season began, I feel like the old man on defense. He's the only one of the three defensive linemen who made it back this year. Brad Hunt is gone, along with David Grant. One-yard loss, third down and 11. And complete. Out of bounds, Bo Orlando, Elvoid Mays, back on the coverage. Ron Hurd again, the intended receiver. So the Mountaineers hold again. That's the defense's objective. Go in three plays, hold them, and put a clamp on everything. Chris Shale, no doubt remembers punt number one. And the Mountaineers do too. They line up ten men along the line. We'll see this look every punt now, Tony. Shell lined up back at his nine-yard line. This one a quick snap back. Granis Bell deep to return for the Mountaineers from the 41. Bell breaks free at midfield. The punter Shell over there to help out as Granis Bell brought it up nine yards. Tony McCorvey made the initial hit to bring Bell out of bounds. So West Virginia's offense has their first chance on the field. 12 minutes and 42 seconds to go. First quarter of play, the Mountaineers leading it 7-0. They spot the ball at the 42-yard line in Bowling Green territory. Major Harris, 1,200 yards through the air a season ago. Greg Taylor and A.B. Brown, the backfield, and A.B. Brown thrown back. A three-yard loss. Derek Carr. 6'5", junior, defensive tackle out of Detroit, Michigan, there to wrap him up. One of the key members of the Bowling Green defense not in there today, Charles Dotson, inside linebacker, and the second leading tackler from last year's club is out of the game with a back injury. That's forced the Bowling Green coaches to move over one of their outside linebackers, Larry Lambright, into the inside field. Here's A.B. Brown. Across the 40-yard line, closing in on the 35. Kyle Kramer, honorable mention, All-American free safety, number 21, in yep. to make the stop. There's a look at West Virginia's new defensive coordinator, Bob Shaw, who replaces Dennis Brown. Shaw has brought a very positive influence to this West Virginia defensive unit, focusing on aggressive play. They want the strip. They want the turnover. Six-yard pickup by A.B. It's third down and four. On the option, Harris will keep. Major to the 30, and that's a first down for the Mountaineers. That's just a base option, Tony, with Major coming down the line and looking for the seam. And one thing that Bowling Green's going to have a hard time, their free safety, Kyle Kramer, is going to have a hard time whether or not run support or try to play that deep pass. That's what Don Nealon has wanted. He wants the multi-faceted offense, and now he's got it. He can come out of the 
eye backfield, single backfield, the option look, the option pass. First down, this is Craig Taylor pushing ahead through the middle of the line. Toy Easton, the outside linebacker, makes the initial hit. There's Easton, 88. You know, Craig's a, a good, strong back. Last year, he was not tackled for a loss. Yeah, he carried it 77 times and did not lose a yard on any carry. He spot the ball at the 26, a four-yard pickup by Taylor. It's second down and six. Jamie Lamont in as a receiver for the Mountaineers. Harris with that option drop. Into the end zone he goes. Intended over there for Reggie Rembert. Just a little bit too high. Tony McCorvey, the left cornerback there. Rembert is the junior college wide receiver. Makes his home in Okeechobee, Florida. He has really impressed the coaches for the Mountaineers. 4-3 speed in the 40-yard dash. He was a junior college All-American a season ago. Think about it is, Tony, he's 6-6. He can get up there. Third down and six. Harris again with the option look. A.B. Brown can't hold it. Harris can. And on determination and second effort, Harris brings the ball up to the 27-yard line. That was just a little miscommunication between Major and A.B. Charlie Bauman comes in. He'll spot the ball at the 34-yard line. This will be a 44-yard attempt for Bauman. Season ago, he was 14 of 20 in the field goal department. From 44 yards away, he hits it. As the Mountaineers take a 10 to nothing lead with exactly 10 minutes to go in the first quarter of play. Charlie Bauman with a fist in the air as he bangs one home from 44 yards away. That ties his career long in four seasons at West Virginia. He has kicked one farther than that, a 55-yarder in the annual gold and blue scrimmage, but that's the longest in a regular season game. It ties the mark from 44 yards away. Bauman hits it, and West Virginia goes on top 10 to nothing. This is the kind of a start that Don Nealon and his club had been hoping for. There's no question about that. And getting back to Charlie, it seems like Charlie's been in the blue and gold forever now. Four years at, four years as a starter, and he's been kicking basically from his first day on the field. Mountaineers scoring three on six plays, covering 16 yards, using two minutes and 42 seconds up, culminating with the Bauman field goal. This is Charlie's third kickoff of the game, and we've only played five minutes. Coming to the near side, Reggie Thornton again will let it take a hop, and Bowling Green will start from their 20-yard line. So Bauman had a short one on his first kick, and the next two he has put into the end zone. That's something that he's wanted to work on. He said that he's pretty happy with his field goal kicking, but he wants to improve the length of his kickoffs, and he's done that. One thing you'll notice, Tony, that the first kick was to the right, and the second kick was to the left. So it's a little easier for him to kick to the left. So you'll see that ball go a little deeper than the right-hand side. But that gives West Virginia the flexibility of going either way. Falcons have done little of nothing in their first two possessions. Back in again, we'll try to get something going here. Now back is Mike McGee. Again, they try the inside of the West Virginia defensive front. You mentioned that they very rarely run to the outside. Why? Basically because of Dakin's uh, speed. He can't get to the perimeter, and he's more of a drop-back type player. Those two big, strong fullbacks are going to hunk it up in, the, in there for you. That play, Chris Parker just made a tremendous play and just punched the heck out of that other guard. Three-yard pickup at second down and seven. Dakin has his man, that is the fullback, Sean Daniels. And now Boyd Mays and Chris Herring converging right up there to the first down marker. And that'll be a first down for Bowling Green, their first first down of the afternoon. Dakin on a, a pro drop here, he scrambles to the outside and sees the underneath pattern. And West Virginia con converges on the ball. Deron Ellis coming up to make that play just before the ball was caught, slipped on the new surface here at Mountaineer Field. First down and 10 from the 30-yard line. That's Reggie Thornton in motion. 
and Thornton, the intended receiver, are just a little bit too high. Darrell Whitmore, the free safety over there covering for West Virginia. A season ago, Reggie Thornton led Bowling Green in receptions with 47. Had quite an afternoon against the Penn State Nittany Lions in the season opener from a year ago. Finished up the ball game with 256 yards total offense at 152 yards in catches and 104 in kickoff returns. But so far this afternoon, the kickoff returns have been sailing over his head. You know, they have great speed in the wide receivers with Hurd and Thornton. Hurd runs a 4 2 5 40. Second and 10. They go to the tile back. That's Mike McGee. And again, they try the middle of the line. Mike McGee, Perry. And again, the West Virginia defense closes up quickly. Mike Fox and Scott Summits, two new members of that West Virginia defensive front. There's Summits out of Davidsville, Pennsylvania. He replaces David Grant. He was switched to nose guard last spring and has made a good transition. He's a good, tough, hard-nosed player. Back in struggling so far as far as the throwing goes. One of five for just seven yards. Third down and eight, so another obvious passing situation. Pressure is on. And that ball was nearly intercepted there and then recaught. Coming over was Basil Proctor. Transfer from the University of Miami. They were looking for Thornton. And Proctor made the touch on that ball and it almost came conveniently into the arms of Thornton. Good pressure here by Robert Pickett, John. Pickett took a little dip to the inside and we lost contain momentarily, but a great play by the linebacker on the underneath. One more yard of sideline there, and Reggie Thornton would have had himself a circus catch. Brings up fourth down and eight. Grannis Bell awaiting at his 25. This is Chris Shale. Good job there by the WVU Hunt team. Almost came in there to make the block. Bell breaks free. Again, Grannis Bell brings the ball into Bowling Green territory. Already we have seen a big improvement in the West Virginia special teams. Number one, Grannis Bell in the same mold of great punt returners of West Virginia past, Holden Walker and Willie Drury. Bell had a 28-yard return on his first punt, and he takes off here again. Grant is featured in this week's edition of Sports Illustrated's college football preview. He, along with teammate Calvin Phillips, featured as two receivers who have left the state of Florida to come play up east. Mountaineers from Bowling Green 42, A.B. Brown. Rolls over the 46-yard line. Larry Lambright, inside linebacker, along with Derry Carr. There to make the stop. A.B. Brown said last year was the most frustrating season he's ever played. He was bothered by injuries throughout and never really gained his total confidence, just the, the feeling that a running back needs. He says this is his year. He was honorable mention all East last year, and he has a very low center of gravity, very hard to tackle. A.B. to the left. Has his hole. And Brown rolls it to the 30-yard line. That's a first down for the Mountaineers. He kind of reminds you of the little back from New Jersey with the New England Giants. I'm sorry, the New Jersey Giants. Joe Morris. Morris, right, with that low center gravity, gravity, but Brown is a little bit bigger and stronger. Craig Taylor throwing a key block there. Give Brown the room. First down and 10 for the Mountaineers from the Bowling Green 30. West Virginia leads it 10 to nothing with 7.09 in county first quarter of play. Harris on the pitch, and here comes the reverse. It's Reggie Wimber with room at the 20, down to the 10 yard line. As mentioned, Reggie Wimber has tremendous speed, a 4 3 40. Just a big guy, 6'6, six, six, over 200 pounds, and we'll see a lot of Reggie this, this fall. That brings it to the 10, so a 20 yard run on the reverse for Reggie Wimber. Quickly has moved himself in to a key position here on the West Virginia offensive unit. Alvin Phillips in motion. First down from the 10 yard line. And it's Taylor to the five. Buck Van Clausen, the inside linebacker, and Dwayne Crenshaw, the nose guard. 
there to make the stop. Taylor says he does not want to be recognized as a running fullback. He says, let the tailbacks take all the excitement and all the attention because when my turn comes, they don't expect me to be able to run it and I can pop free. He's a last what? year, he averaged over four yards per carry. He's a 110% team player. There's the option pitch and Brown has the room and the score. West Virginia with their second touchdown of the ball game builds up a 16 to nothing lead with six minutes and nine seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. Touchdown for A.B. Brown. They've been featuring the toss sweep here the last few plays. Major Harris comes down the line, runs the wish, runs the option, and it's just a foot race to the end zone. Free safety, Terry Wilson had Brown in front of him, but A.B. just used the field and cut it off into the corner. Well, this is everything that everyone expected from West Virginia's offense so far. The extra point by Bauman is good. The Mountaineers lead it 17 to nothing. 6.09 to go. Boy, I tell you, Bowling Green has just got to be shocked. What do they say to themselves at this point? It'll be a tough one. West Virginia on top by 17. Senior A.B. Brown from Salem, New Jersey, gets West Virginia a 17-0 lead with a four-yard run. You know, this West Virginia offensive line all the way across is seniors, five-year seniors, and they're just basically pushing the Bowling Green defensive line away. Five plays, 42 yards in two minutes and three seconds. It, it takes years to develop great offensive linemen, and all these guys are over 400-pound benches, all seniors, so we ought to see a much improved offensive line this year. There's Reggie Thornton, who's hoping that he'll get a chance to return a kickoff today. Two of Bauman's three kicks have gone over his head and into the end zone. Again, Charlie kicks it to the left side of the field, and Thornton will get a chance from the five. there to make the stop, Darren Fulton came up and under and flipped him over. The kickoff team objective is to hold that kickoff return team inside the 25. So they didn't meet their objective that time. Dave Lockwood also in on the stop. Lockwood a senior from Media, Pennsylvania. Has seen action over the past several seasons for the Mountaineers. Comes into this game as the backup to Willie Edwards at right cornerback. Kickoff, refuse. First down, Bowling Green. You do not see that kind of deal. Offsides against the return team. Penalty is declined. There's Dave McMichael, and we mentioned that senior offensive line the Mountaineers have. Coach McMichael's a Bowling Green graduate, so he's kind of got mixed emotions today. I asked him that, and he said, "Hey, when the gun goes off, I'll be, I'll bleed blue and gold." He knows who signs the paycheck. This is Mike McGee, the tailback. Across to the 39-yard line. McGee was the starting tailback for Bowling Green last season. You see him there without his shoe. Was the starting tailback, then ran into a problem with fumbles. Committed five fumbles, and head coach Mo Ankney said that's it for Mike McGee and saw very little action after that point. He does have breakaway speed. Has two school records for runs from scrimmage. Has a 93-yarder for a touchdown. And also ran 189 yards last season against Ball State. Bowling Green's running, running game has suffered a little bit in the last year because they are so limited with, the, with, the, with their people's ability. Uh, McGee with 313 yards last year and Viscount with seven yards last year. McGee's run. Enough for the first down as they bring it up to the 40-yard line. Five minutes and 49 seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. Over 50,000 on hand at Mountaineer Field for the opening game of the season. Dakin, as you can see, has not had success so far through the air. This is Charles Edgerton. Reserve tailback pops up the football. That's what West Virginia's been wanting, but they'll rule it down. Throughout spring ball, West Virginia's defensive philosophy has been strip the ball, cause the turnover. Edgerton popped it up there after hitting the ground, so it will be Bowling Green football. Key Ellis makes a great play here outside on perimeter. He just runs him down and makes a super play for an inside linebacker. Got the hand in there to cause that strip, but he was down as the ball popped free. 
One of the keys the Mountaineers are stressing this season is to be ahead on the turnover ratio. When Don Nealon's clubs have done that, they've had successful teams. Back in. As is man. That's Ron Hurd at the 45-yard line in Mountaineer territory. So Bowling Green finally makes it into the West Virginia side of the field. Elboy Mays and Darrell Whitmore there to make the stop. Hurd has tremendous speed. There is no question about that. What happened here is Bo Orlando was on a strong safety game. He put good pressure on the quarterback, but when you do stunt, there is a void in the defense, and that's exactly where they threw the ball. Getting back to Hurd's speed, he's been clocked as a 4-3-40 man and finished in the top three in the 100 and 200 meter sprint events at the MAC championships last year. Big hit and a fumble. The ball is loose. Chris Parker making the initial hit. And he'll have to clean the pile up. Boy, Chris Parker came in from his tackle spot and really laid it on Charles Edgerton. T. Ellis did a great job on the isolation. I, he really put the hammer to him on that one. Greg Glasgow, the right guard there, to pounce on the ball. So the Mountaineers, two successive plays, caused the ball to pop up. Bowling Green has hold on. Second down and nine from the WVU 44. Al Jackson has Dakin in his pants. Puts him to the turf. And Dakin now is one of eight throwing. Dale, actually a senior out of Canton, Ohio, really began to be an impact player for this WVU unit a year ago. A strong physical guy in the offseason, put on some weight, comes in as 244 pounds, six foot two, 244 pounds senior out of Canton, Ohio. He's master of the big play, and he reminds you of the great West Virginia linebackers over the last couple years, folks. Tally, Preston, Hathaway. Garcia. <laughs> Third down and nine from the WVU 44. Obvious passing situation for the Falcons. cannot be held on there by reserve split in Ken Rankin and the Falcons will be forced to come again Willie Edwards over there on the coverage again the pressure was in the front of Jackin and you mentioned that he does not have the great speed and so when the pressure comes in on him he does not have the ability like a Major Harris to scoot out there and set himself up again basically a drop back guy and once he sees it coming at him he's got to get rid of it or eat it that's exactly right and one thing coach Shaw has bring with him from the USFL is a little bit of gambler in him he's not going to sit back and play fundamental football he's going to go after you Chris Shell on to punt Bell's going to let this one bounce over his head and West Virginia will have the touchback they'll start off first and ten on their 20-yard line. Three minutes and 25 seconds to go, and WB leads it 17 to nothing. You know, this is really the poorest field position that the Mountaineers have had. They've been able to capitalize on some great punt returns by Granis Bell and have started from inside Bowling Green territory. There's the major, a sophomore out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We really need a good drive here to get off our heels. You know, the score is 17-0, and, and the kids can become a little bit complacent. So we need a good drive to get this place pumped up again. Elvin Phillips and Granis Bell and as receivers. A.B. Brown stays in at the tailback position. This is Brown. Doug Van Fossen and Andy Maines in to make the stop. To give you an idea of how shaken up and how banged up this Bowling Green defensive unit is, going into spring practice, Andy Maines, who just made the stop there, was listed as the seventh inside linebacker. Seventh inside linebacker, depth-wise, because of injuries here and there, players not coming back, he's put into a big play position. Here comes Craig Taylor. Nearly lost the football. Talk about stripping it. One of the Bowling Green defenders, Kyle Kramer, came in there to give it a whack. But Taylor holds on. First down for the Mountaineers. That plays awful difficult for a middle linebacker to read because West Virginia has been showing a lot of toss sweep. And when that quarterback reverses out like that, those linebackers have a tendency to fly out of there. And that's what Taylor did. He saw the seam and did a great run. Good block there by right tackle Milton Redwine. To break it loose. First down for the Mountaineers from the 46-yard line. Harris goes out into the flat. He's got his tight end, Keith Wynn. Wynn, the 
third leading receiver on last year's club with 13 catches has really gone through a transition process at West Virginia started off as a wide receiver pushed into a tight end situation because of injuries at that position and has spent the last couple of years learning the system building himself up and he comes into this season weighing 218 pounds he's six foot two and he's the key player there for West Virginia at the tight end they've got depth there Adrian Moss backing him and Point Pleasant's Daryl Mitchell will also see action there you see number 80 Daryl Mitchell usually, the ball game. usually when you have a a wide receiver who converts to a tight end position it's awful difficult for him to learn up the to pick up the blocking skills he has the ball catching skills and that's one thing Keith's working on this fall Derek Carr shaken up on the play seems to be favoring his left leg as he's helped off by the Bowling Green trainers so wind goes out after the first down catch and run and Daryl Mitchell comes in. This is his first varsity experience. Phillips in motion. And A.B. Brown with the carry. Slices his way up to the 20 yard line. He'll be shy of the 20. Mike Holmes and Kyle Kramer from the defensive back positions come up to make the stop. And I think that tells you exactly what West Virginia's able to do. They're pushing away that Bowling Green defensive front, forcing the defensive backs to come up and make the stop. That offensive line is centered behind number 57, Kevin Koken, a 400 plus bencher, and he's been in there for a few years. They call him the quarterback of the offense. Seven yard pickup, second down and three from the 22. Major has his tight end, that's Daryl Mitchell to the 10 yard line. Michael Holmes, 23 to make the stop, but that's the first catch as a WV Mountaineer for Daryl Mitchell. He'll remember that one for a while. You know, Mitchell came in and was a little bit taken back by the intensity of major college football. But over the past couple of years, he's grown accustomed to it. And he says, now I feel at home. Before, I felt like taking off. Here's Taylor. Touchdown. <laughs> Tremendous blocking, John, by the WVU offensive line. There was a hole there left open by Kovac, Koken, and Stroya right up the middle from nine yards away. Taylor gives West Virginia a 23 to nothing lead with 1.32 to go here in the first quarter. Extra point by Charlie Bauman is good, and the Mountaineers lead it 24 to nothing. Boy, I tell you. At the onset of that offensive possession, you said West Virginia needs a long drive. That's exactly what they got. If you'll remember, they started from back at their own 20, so an 80-yard drive as West Virginia continues to dominate this one. This is exactly where the West Virginia offensive unit left off from a season ago. You know that, John? They averaged 35 points per game in their last eight outings, and they've already built up 24 here. 1.32 to go, quarter number one. Don't forget that Mountaineer Sports Night will come to you next Friday evening on MSN Television. Host Woody O'Hara will talk with head coach John Nealon and preview the Cal State Fullerton game. The new show, if you haven't seen it, is loaded with features and information, giving fans a behind-the-scenes look at WVU football. Consult your local listings. It's Mountaineer Sports Night. Charlie Baumann's not having himself a bad scoring afternoon. Has himself a 44-yard field goal. Three touchdown point afters. Six points. There's Craig Taylor. Senior out of Linden, New Jersey. The thing that's amazing about Charlie is last year he had an 80% percentage of getting that field goal through the uprights. So that's, that's almost money in the bank every time he lines up to that line of scrimmage. He quickly made people forget, although they don't, of Paul Woodside. Woody was such a great kicker for the Mountaineers. And the year after he left, here comes Bauman. And really, there has never been a decline in the productivity of that field goal position. Bauman was bothered in his sophomore year, if you'll remember, by a bad five pull. But he's come back, and he's doing a good job for West Virginia. From the five-yard line over across the 20-yard line. 
Bringing it up for the Falcons. That's Scott Lindsay. Lindsay this time caught his footing. If you'll remember the opening kickoff of the ball game, he made the catch and his foot slid back and his knee was touched down back at the 12-yard line. Well, when you're up by 24 points, you can kick back and have yourself a drink on the sidelines. That's what Don Nealon is doing. One thing you may want to note is number 12 on the kickoff team, Chuck Levinas, a 13 quarterback running down underneath kickoffs. Ron Viscount, the fullback, and Mike McGee, the tailback for the Falcons. Dakin again looks at that WVU pressure. Trying to get it over there to his tailback, Mike McGee, Elvoid Mays, the best man-on-man -man coverage person in the West Virginia defensive backfield there. Chris Parker and Ronaldo Turnbull putting the pressure on Dakin. Dakin now 2 of 10, passing for just 19 yards. Dale had great pressure on the uh, Bowling Green offensive line that time. Last year, he was named defensive champion in the Cincinnati and Rutgers games. Second and 10 from the 22. This is the fullback, Viscount. Just the first time they've gone to him this afternoon. Chris Herring, the inside linebacker out of Pueblo, Colorado makes the stop. Chris was the leading tackler on last year's Mountaineer Club. Spent the offseason back home in Colorado. But says he loves it in Morgantown. He's a golfer and a swimmer. <laughs> His uncle Joe is the head coach of the Arena Football League's Pittsburgh Gladiators. And his dad's a head coach as well. So he comes from a football family. How would you like to golf with him? <laughs> I'm imagining he could put some whack into it. Back in again. Intended over there for Ron Hurd and badly thrown. That'll bring up fourth down. Chris is my idea of a blue-collar linebacker. I mean, his socks are pulled down. He has blood on his pants. He's just a heck of a young guy. He played as a true freshman for the Mountaineers. If you'll remember that season, for two years back now, he, along with Lonnie Brockman, were forced into action when things got low on the depth chart for the Mountaineers at linebacker. Made that key interception last year against Penn State also. Brandis Bell has done a great job this afternoon returning punts. 39 seconds to go in the first quarter. The Mountaineers lead it 24 to nothing. Oh! oh! Punt by Darryl Whitmore. Darren Fulton after it. And the Mountaineers will have the ball inside the 20-yard line. Darryl Whitmore. There he is, number 11. The freshman out of Front Royal Virginia made the stop. And 23, Darren Fulton, back this season after being academically ineligible last year, counts down the football. The Mountaineers will have it at the 18-yard line. Just a great individual effort by Darrell. As Coach Nealon said, there'll be more emphasis on the special teams this year. And so far, they've been paying big dividends. That's the second time they've botched up the Bowling Green punt. He may have to give Coach Wallace a raise after today. From the 18, ahead to the 15-yard line. That's Andre Johnson in for his first carry this afternoon, the senior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Andre really finished off the last game of the regular season a year ago with a bang. In a reserve role, over 100 yards in the second half against Syracuse. Just a fine young man, extremely talented and very quick. Gain three on the play, second and seven. Whistles blow as the quarter comes to an end. West Virginia leads at 24 to nothing. Well, it was the first quarter that West Virginia could have only wished for, and they got it. 24 to nothing as the Mountaineers start off this 1988 season as if they never missed a hitch. Take a look at the first quarter numbers, totally dominated by the Mountaineers. 105 yards on the ground, 37 on the pass as Harris was two for three throwing. A.B. Brown, the leading rusher for West Virginia, with 37 yards on seven carries. So Brown continues to hold consistency as far as his average gain per carry comes into this season, averaging five yards a tote. West Virginia knocking on the door once again from their 15-yard line of Bowling Green territory. Second down and seven. Under Johnson pushing himself over the 10-yard line. Nose guard Dwayne Crenshaw, number 50, makes the hit along with right cornerback Mike Holmes. 
Bob Kovac pulling around there for him. Bob is a 500-pound bench presser out of Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Played for one of the most winningest high school coaches in Pennsylvania history, Lindy Laro. Back that entire West Virginia offensive line, bench presses over 400 pounds apiece. First and goal from the seven, and Johnson slips down at the five. Tony, that's amazing. Alan Johnson has done a great job with his strength program. The first winter that Coach Nealon came here, I was a West Virginia player, and we had two people bench press over 400 pounds. Al told me just last week he has 34 individuals bench press 400 pounds. So that tells you how far this program has come in the last eight years. Had a couple of guys, in fact, they because of some nagging injuries, they didn't let them go ahead and max out in their bench press. He thinks he could even have a few more. Johnson again, looking to the outside. And a good hit there. Terry Wilson coming up from his strong safety position. Lose a yard on that play. Under Johnson. Take a look at that. Very impressive. Predominantly as a reserve player, West Virginia. He's played behind John Hollifield. He's played behind A.B. Brown and he's 10th all-time rushing for the Mountaineers. Aaron Evans now in at the fullback spot. Harris with a timing pattern. Remember, touchdown! Everything goes right, everything falls into place. And they, Mountaineers at this point cannot seem to do anything wrong. They have been, if you can say it, perfect. There's a look at Reggie Rembert. Six yard touchdown pass he just hauled in, his first touchdown as a Mountaineer. A junior college All American a season ago. Makes his hometown in Lake Okeechobee, Florida. One of 17 players on the Mountaineer roster this season from the state of Florida. Boy, John, what do you do if you're bowling green at this point? That, that high emotional level that you had coming in thinking upset, I'm sure has dissipated to an all-time low. What are you thinking at this point? Play. <laughs> That's about it, Tony. I mean, the score is 31-0 in the second quarter. It's awful difficult. They'll have to go back in it at halftime and regroup and play, get back to fundamental football. Mountaineers use up five plays on the last scoring drive. If you'll remember, it was set up by the blocked punt of Daryl Whitmore. So the special teams put the West Virginia offense in good position, and Major Harrison crew converted. 31 to nothing, WVU. Bauman goes to the far side, and this is Reggie Thornton from the five. Up across the 25-yard line. That's just about his average return. A season ago, he averaged 20 yards of return. And yes, it's hot out there. For WVU senior co-captain Kevin Koki, he'll go with the double ice treatment. Is that called on the rocks? <laughs> First and ten, Bo Orlando comes out of the lineup and Lawrence Drumgool will come in at the strong safety position. Rich Dakin has completed just two passes this afternoon. Up ahead to the 30-yard line. Eric Lester there to make the stop. Ball was hauled in there by tailback Mike McGee. It seems like Eric's been around here forever. He's just a tough kid from Cleveland. He's one of the, the second leading tackler in his high school's history behind Tom, Tom Cousineau. <laughs> He's also a heck of a softball player in the summertime also, that right? Yeah. He's been plagued by injuries at WVU. Always seems to get banged up. And that's one of the reasons that they made the move of Theron Ellis to the inside position because they really don't know on a week-to-week -week basis 
if Lester will be able to go. Here's a big hole. Mike McGee over the 45 yard line. As that Mike breakaway McGee speed we were talking about, Willie Edwards and Daryl Whitmore there to make the stop, the longest Stop run from scrimmage for the Falcons. That backside linebacker has to slow his motor down. He's responsible for that cutback and has to sit right in that hole. That's just something that comes with a little bit of maturity. Take a look at number four out there for West Virginia. That's inside linebacker Steve Grant, a true freshman out of Miami, Florida. In all likelihood, he'll be the only freshman not redshirted in this year's class. Dakin, the pressure is on, and Turnbull's got it. <laughs> Turnbull's been there all afternoon with the tremendous pressure from the outside. As mentioned, physically, just a tough character to handle. Six feet, five inches tall, 234 pounds, long legs, long arms, great vertical leap. Like a snake, he wrapped up Dakin and pushed him back. That's an eight-yard loss. Second down. Second down and 18 from the Falcon 40. Coach Kurlavis says he has the potential to be one of the best outside linebackers in West Virginia history. They'll show the shotgun on second down and long. And the inside handoff goes to McGee. Tripped up there. Mike McGee, the ball carrier. Jim Gray in at nose guard for WVU. Jim's another player that the WVU coaching staff is very high on. You mentioned Turnbull. Gray is a red-shirted freshman out of New Jersey. And they expect big things from him. I was at practice last week, and Steve Grant made a tackle on the kickoff. It made me crunch, Tony. <laughs> Get back five yards on the play, third down and 13. Good defensive job by the Mountaineers. Lawrence Drumgold was there. Tight end Kyle Hockman, the intended receiver. And Dakin again thrown to the ground by, guess who, Ronaldo Turnbull. This is a straight drop back, and West Virginia is a man coverage. It's just a, an absolute perfect coverage. Great play. But West Virginia defense now is full of reserves. So Don Nealon up by 31 points with 11 minutes to go here in the second quarter has begun to substitute freely. Mountaineers have already botched up two punt attempts by Bowling Green. Shell will get this one off. Shanked off the right side. No return as Bell lets it roll out at the 12 yard line. So the Mountaineer offense will take it first and 10 from their own 12 yard line, leading it 31 to nothing, 10.55 to go. Major Harris has built up a 31-0 lead for this WVU team from the Mountaineer 12-yard line. Dave Kinsey coming over, defensive tackle. A.B. Brown back into the game for West Virginia. A.B. was spelled in the last series by Andre Johnson. We have yet to see Eugene Napoleon, but I'm sure by game's end we will see Eugene Napoleon, the junior out of Jersey City, New Jersey. Milton Redwine in the game, one of the smaller players on West Virginia defense, offensive line, 300 pounds. <laughs> he's another guy that seems as though he's been around for years. How would you like to feed him? <laughs> no thanks. One yard loss at second and 11. Daryl Mitchell, second grab of the afternoon, brings it up to the 20 yard line. That'll bring up a third down and two. Doug Van Fossen, outside linebacker, and Andy Maines, the inside linebacker, coming over to make the stop. Daryl Mitchell, one of three WVU players who was married in the offseason. That brings the total number of married players up to four. Rick Phillips has been married for a couple of years, WVU's left tackle. Bo Orlando, his lovely wife, Mary. That's right. Dale Wolfley, also married. Here's the major. First down, West Virginia, as Harris makes a broken play. Look good. Andy Maines over there again to make the stop. Major's the kind of quarterback that gives defensive coordinators nightmares. I mean, you only have two days to practice and get ready for this guy. You have to put in the wishbone, the option, the drop back pass. There's so many different facets that he can do, it's awful difficult to prepare for. Is there any way to prepare for a quarterback like Harris who seems as though he is so, you know, 
such a great athlete when it comes to the run. I mean, how do you prepare for something like that? I don't think Harris knows what he's going to do, let alone how do you prepare for it. I remember when we went out to uh, Oklahoma, the week of preparation, it's awful difficult to simulate that look and that speed, and that's one thing that defensive have, have problems with. Ball starts, offense, repeat, first down. Left side of that right WVU the offensive line, left early. That'll bring the Mountaineers back five yards, first down and 15 from the 18-yard line. Major Harris, four of five, passing for 52 yards, the option. Harris has the first down. Knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. He needed the 34 for the first down. So the penalty quickly made up. Tony McCorvey, left cornerback over there, to make the stop. Major coming down the line on the option, sees the seam, and just uses his athletic ability. Just a great athlete, and he'll be an impact player. I think you'd probably say he is the impact no player. No question about that. Mountaineers with the first down. Line up two receivers to the right side. Harris four of five so far this afternoon. Make it five of six. Whip. They're going to say incomplete. Gratis Bell doesn't like the call. Ball came in there low, so they're calling it as a trap. Doug Van Fossen, the inside linebacker, was guarding Bell. He curled it at the 45-yard line. Too close to call, but it was down there low. So that'll bring up second down and 10. Eight minutes and 54 seconds to go, first half of action. Again, the option, and again, Harris. Harris to midfield. The major at the 30 yard line. The right cornerback finally got a hold of Harris. But not before Major danced it down inside Bowling Green territory. They'll spot it at the 28-yard line. The Whirly Bird option. Major spins out, and what that does, it holds those linebackers and freezes them so they can't get to the perimeter. Then it's just a foot race and great athletic ability by Major. Terry Wilson, the last line of defense at free safety to make the stop. Here's the fullback. WV is Craig Taylor, who's already has one touchdown, already has one touchdown today. Pushed out of bounds there by Kyle Kramer. But that's another first down for the Mountaineers. It's almost like a scrimmage. Not only Major being an impact player, but number 57, Kevin Koken, whether the person that offensive line is centered around, is one of the great offensive centers that West Virginia's had. Aaron Evans inside the five-yard line. Sophomore out of Richmond, Virginia. He'll share playing time as the number two fullback this season with Rico Tyler. And again, John, you mentioned it. What West Virginia is having success doing is showing them that option, running to the outside, running to the outside, and then boom, they'll put it right down into the middle. Tough for a defense to know what's ahead. That's right. Whistles blow, timeout is called. It will be charged to Bowling Green. Eight minutes and nine seconds remain here in the second quarter of play with West Virginia leading it 31 to nothing. If you look back in the history books a little bit, every bowl team that West Virginia had has been centered around a great center. You had Bill Legg over the last few bowls, Al Husky in the Peach Bowl, and now Kevin Koken. And the same can be said when West Virginia has had a strong quarterback West Virginia has had successful teams. Oliver Luck, Jeff Hostetler, and then the 84 season, Kevin White, who was underestimated for ability, came up and did a great job. It was White that engineered the victories over Penn State, Boston College, and then the Blue Bonnet Bowl victory over Texas Christian. Speaking of Ollie Luck, I'm sure our listeners would like to know what Ollie is up to. He'll be getting married here this month. Yeah, Oliver's coming in in October. He's over in Germany right now. 
He was on an internship with six months in a college out there studying international law and six months working in a, in a firm. He'll be coming over in October 22nd, I think he is, to get married. And my wife and I are going to go down and visit him. And he'll be living down in Houston, is that right? Uh, I have heard some rumors that he may be looking in the, a political future in West Virginia. What about that? Definitely the season for politics with the general election coming up in November. The Mountaineers have brought it down to the three-yard line. It'll be first and goal from the three. Rico Tyler in motion. A.B. Brown will lose on the play. Knocked down to the four-yard line. Keith Pace, reserve inside linebacker. Out of hold of Brown and wouldn't let go. He'll lose a yard on the play. Sounds to me as though that official has left his microphone on. <laughs> Have you ever known those things to work, Tony? <laughs> I mean, every pro game, every college game. The one game that it's working, he kept it on. <laughs> so we're hearing everything. Second and goal from the four. Harris with the toss. This is Brown, and again, knocked down for a loss at the five-yard line. Terry Wilson, the free safety coming over. They feel their free safety, number 21, Kyle Kramer, will be a pro, spot, pro prospect. A 4-5 speed, excellent feel for the ball. Another yard loss, so it's third down and goal. And so what looked to be another West Virginia touchdown may have to be settled for a field goal. Eugene Napoleon in. Put it on the board, the Harris touchdown keep. He makes it look so simple, like a surgeon preparing to make an incision. Where should I go in? Play action pass, and it's awful difficult for those inside linebackers to fly out of there before they can make their read. It's a foot race to the end zone, and it's all over but the shout. And credit should be given there to Aaron Evans, the Mountaineer fullback, who made the last key hit. He was standing in the end zone all alone. 37 to nothing, West Virginia. 6.49 to go. Make it 38. And the Mountaineers beating up on the Falcons. Major Harris has racked up 69 yards rushing. He scored the touchdown to give the Mountaineers a 38 to nothing lead. The long gainer in that series for the Mountaineers was a 37 yard run by Harris and he brought it in from five yards away for the score. This is Reggie Thornton from the 10 yard line. Crosses over the 25. Return the kickoff. Zippy Shear, along with Darren Fulton, there to make the stop. The Ron Ellis, number 66, also coming over. Bowling Green has been into West Virginia territory just once this afternoon. A look at the numbers. Eight yards per play, using up about four minutes of clock time. Dakin, whose strength is passing, is struggling through the air this afternoon. The tailback is McGee. Lonnie Brockman, Scott Summits there to make the hit. A great job filling in on a play by the young freshman, Steve Grant, number four. Kind of a strange number for a linebacker, isn't it? It is. I was wondering the same thing. I guess that's the number that he wore in high school, and it was available. So they said, fine, you can have it if you want it. Coach Nealon says he's going to be a great one. Doesn't know where he's going yet. Just hits you when he gets there. So far, that's working. Steve Grant and Eric Lester at the inside linebacker positions. One-yard pickup, second down and nine. Back into the far side, and he's got Reggie Thornton. First down for the Falcons. Darrell Whitmore, free safety over there to knock him out of bounds. Thornton is considered the premier receiver on this Bowling Green team. As mentioned, led the club with 47 catches a year ago. We got contact the press box. Yeah. 
And again, Dakin will throw. Going deep. He's got Ron Hur. The flag comes down. Darren Fulton was in on the coverage. And it'll be an interference call. Heard with the great speed we were talking about. Got by Darren Fulton. Ball came in. Fulton got the hand in, but apparently too early. I mean, this guy runs a 4-2-5-40. Just flat out speed. Darrell was beaten a little bit. Made a good adjustment to the ball. Looked like a good strip from up here. Pass interference against the defense. Automatic first down. So the Falcons will come into West Virginia territory thanks to the penalty. They'll bring it to the 39-yard line. 5.55 to go, second quarter of play. Mark Bongers, reserve flanker, into the Falcon lineup for the first time this afternoon. Ball carrier is Mike McGee. Spun down and brought under by Steve Grant, freshman out of Miami, Florida. Grant caught the eyes of the WVU coaches right from the start of fall practice. He, along with another freshman named Boris Graham, made some hard hits first couple days in pads, and they said, wow, watch out for these guys. Probably the first play. <laughs> and one of the big scrimmages that brought an end to two-a-day practices, Grant intercepted a pass, ran it back for 20 yards. Couple yard pickup, second down and eight. Pressure on Dakin. And he scoots one on the ground, intended over there. Ron Hurd. That'll bring up third down and eight. It's awful difficult for a quarterback to keep his poise when you're down 38 nothing and within the first half. And it's going to be a long day for Dakin. You can see four of 15. He came into the ball game with a 57% completion ratio, but not today. This time he hits Ron Hurd at the 30 yard line. That's very close to the first down. And now a flag goes down. Back over where Dakin was, it'll be a personal foul roughing the passer. So a big completion plus the penalty will really help Bowling Green out here. Against the defense, 15 yards from the end of the completion. First down. So they had the first down on the throw to Hurd, and now they'll tack 15 more yards on, and that'll bring it all the way down to the WVU 15-yard line. Number 59, Eric Lester, getting the signals from Coach Shaw, and he'll use a variation of hand signals to call the defenses. Falcons have their first legitimate chance at scoring here this afternoon. First and 10 from the 15. The fullback is Daniels. And he's wrapped up by nose guard Scott Summits and inside linebacker Steve Grant again around the football. Boy, I'm telling you, watch number four for the Mountaineers. He's been all over the field this afternoon. His first game as a Mountaineer Last time this year, he was playing as a senior in high school. And now he's got over 50,000 watching him here at Mountaineer Field. Two-yard pickup by the fullback, Daniels. Second down and eight from the 13. Here's the pressure, timing pattern. Batted away by Fulton. Again, it was that matchup between Ron Hurd and Darren Fulton. The last time they went head-to-head, -head, it resulted in an interference penalty, but this time Fulton backpedaling to slap the ball out. Looks like at Bowling Green still running Coach Nealon's play as a number of years ago. A great job by Darrell. Well-thrown ball, but Fulton got his hand in on it. That's the exact play that West Virginia scored on. The six-yard toss to Reggie Rembert down the other side of the field. I heard Coach Nealon still has his picture up there in the locker room. Yeah, some big sideburns on there. <laughs> a lot more hair. Looking real nice. Third down and eight, a big play for the WVU defense. That's Thornton in motion. Again, they try the outside, and again, 
They work it as a completion out there to Thornton down at the one yard line. Darrell Whitmore on the coverage for the Mountaineers. West Virginia knew all about Reggie Thornton coming into this one. They were worried about Thornton. They were worried about Ron Hurd. First down and goal from the one yard line. Mountaineers lead at 38 zip. On the wishbone. No signal yet. And they did not get in there. That was the fullback, Sean Daniels. Chris Parker makes a great play. He had great punch that time. Came up through and made the big play. Nose of that football is just a matter of an inch or two away from the end zone. And again, they do not get in. That'll bring up third down and goal. And again, they went to the fullback, Daniels. Great surge by that West Virginia defensive front. Those two, those two middle guards' objective is to keep their noses down on the ground and get low and bust those seams. They've done a great job. Now remember, Bowling Green doesn't like to put that ball on the perimeter. Let's see what happens. We'll get another crack at it. Same formation from the bone. This time they get it in there. Mike McGee breaks the shutout with two minutes and 35 seconds to go. McGee from one yard away, but give it to that West Virginia defense that held back two attempted dives by the fullback. So a big completion to Ron Hurd, aided by a 15-yard roughing the passer penalty, puts Bowling Green in great position, and they convert. Jason Zeller. Extra point attempt is good, and the Falcons trail it by 31 points. It's 38 to seven with 2.35 to go here in quarter number two. Mike McGee, the leading ground gainer for Bowling Green, 11 carries, 40 yards, and one touchdown. Stop by for your favorite WVU souvenir. All the proceeds provide support for scholarships of WVU student athletes. Reggie Rembert. Puts the helmet on, and he'll go back as a kick return man for the Mountaineers. How would you like to be about a 5'10 free safety, Tony? And this big guy, 6'6", comes flying by you on a post pattern. You know, not only the height, it's the speed that they say is so scary, and the way he runs. Talking to Bo Orlando, he said he was amazed the first couple of times he covered Reggie Rembert in practice, the fact that He's running at you, and it looks like he's going in slow motion because he takes these long, graceful steps, and before you know it, you're looking behind you, and there he goes. If it were me, it would be chasing, not racing. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at the Bowling Green scoring drive. 12 plays and 72 yards, 4 minutes and 14 seconds, aided by that 15-yard roughing the passer penalty. Number 6, Jason Zeller. Reggie Rembert is the deep man for the Mountaineers. The deep receiver for the Mountaineers. Coach Wallace says the kickoff returns objective is to get the ball out to the 35. So let's see what happens. The up men are Andre Johnson and Eugene Napoleon. That's Jason Zeller. Nicknamed Fuzzy Zeller. After the successful golfer on the Pro Tour. Johnson. From the 19-yard line, here comes Under with a hole. Penalty marker down. Johnson brings it to the 38-yard line, but let's sort out the penalty. It will go against West Virginia. So they'll mark it off in the 38. Against the receiving team, during the run back, 10 yard penalty, first down. So they'll bring it back to the 28 yard line. That's where West Virginia's offense will start from. First and 10, 
from the 28, make it the 25. So Johnson's run back went to the 35 yard line and they bring it back 10 yards. This will be a great opportunity for some young players to gain some valuable experience on that offensive line. Harris to Rembert. And he's out just shy of the 30-yard line. Tony McCorby, the left cornerback there. Number 64, Dale Wolfley, his brother Ronnie, uh, playing NFL right now. I heard he called uh, West Virginia this week to talk about special teams. Yep, they put him over the speakerphone and he gave an inspirational speech on just how important special teams are. And the Mountaineers apparently took it to heart because they have been involved in two blocked punts this afternoon. Harris, up to the 35 yard line. Dale Wolfley's out there on the Mountaineer offensive line along with Milton Redwine, Jeff Price, John Stroya. So several of the regulars are not in there. Dale's mother, es Esther, a big Mountaineer fan. Makes the trips up from Orchard Park, New York. She makes a weekend out of it, provided that the Pittsburgh Steelers are home. She can watch the Mountaineer game on Saturday and then drive to Pittsburgh to watch son Craig play on Sundays. Keeps her busy. Measuring for the first down. Got that chain out there, pulled taut. How would you like that Thanksgiving dinner? Greg Wolfley, Ron Wolfley, and Dale Wolfley. You'd have to eat quick. <laughs> the question is not how many pounds the turkey would be, how many turkeys. <laughs> Just shy of that first down, the nose of that football to the 35-yard line. As one of the Mountaineer twirlers prepares for the halftime festivities, two minutes and nine seconds to go here in the first half. Again, the option, but Harris this time looks to throw. Rembrandt has it. Down to the 32-yard line in Bowling Green territory. Terry Wilson, the strong safety, trying to keep up there with Rembrandt, but he ran the down and across. That was wide open. Harris hit him beautifully. This is what Coach Holliday talked about this week. It's awful difficult for a free safety to get involved in run support when he has to cover somebody. And that's exactly what happened. Major came down the line on the option, dropped off, and hit Reggie. The option toss goes to under Johnson. Knocked up to the 30-yard line. So a two-yard gain. It'll bring up second down and eight. Alan Smith over to make the stop for Bowling Green. Andre Johnson gained 616 yards a year ago. Scored four touchdowns. His longest run from scrimmage, a 26-yarder. Number 51, Jeff Price in there for Kevin Koken. Good size and strength and was a walk-on. Not near center of the future is Jeff Price. Nowhere to go for Andre Johnson, back to the line of scrimmage. Outside linebacker Toy Eason. Gave him the bear hug and threw him down. Timeout. West Virginia, that is their first timeout. So the Mountaineers will stop the clock with one minute and 38 seconds to go here in the second quarter of play. WVU leads it 38 to seven. The new Omni turf is just sim simply beautiful, isn't it, Tony? It really is. It's a darker shade of green than the old AstroTurf surface. And besides aesthetics, it is said to be much better to play on. The play although the players did tell me it's very abrasive, almost like falling on sandpaper. Yes, it is. The majority of the skilled players you see out there for West Virginia will be wrapped up at the elbows because it is a very abrasive fiber. They roll on it, they will get cut up. Danny Nealon, the equipment manager, told me that the water just runs off it, just simply great. Third down and eight from the 30 yard line. That's Jamie Lamont in motion. Harris to Bell. Just over the fingertips. Terry Wilson, the free safety, was beat. Bell did. 
to get behind him, but the pass just screwed it over Jerry his fingertips. And Tony McCrory. And that'll bring up fourth down, and Charlie Bauman is out. Now, Charlie has kicked a 60-yarder in practice, and remember a couple years ago in the Blue Gold game, he did kick a 55-yarder. This one will be from 47 yards away. It would be his career long at West Virginia. It's long enough. It's good. Bauman from 47 yards away. The second field goal of the afternoon. And that's the best he's ever booted it as a Mountaineer. 41 to 7. West Virginia has been on top from the outset. There's Mike Wallace with Bauman. As John was mentioning, Mike Wallace has been given the charge of the WVU special teams. They were not happy with what they got last year as far as kickoff returns. Some key kickoff returns went by the wayside. If you'll remember the Penn State game. After West Virginia had taken the lead in the fourth quarter, Penn State brought a kickoff return up to the 40-yard line. And then there were a couple of kickoff returns for sizable gains in the Syracuse game. And they wanted that to stop immediately, so they put Mike Wallace in charge of the WVU special teams. Now, not only is Charlie a fine kicker, but he's a fine young man. You know, the majority of kickers are always a little bit dingy. You, know? <laughs> you played with one, Woodside, right? Yeah, oh, there's no doubt. He'd wear checkered shoes and all kind of crazy things. It was a little bit different. Charlie spent the offseason going across the nation teaching at kicking camps. He's a friend of former Washington Redskin place kicker Mark Mosley. And so he worked on his game while teaching kids how to kick during the summer months. He went to the same high school, Erie Cathedral Prep, that Pitt offensive lineman Mark Stepnowski went to. They're close friends, and they also got together during the offseason to stay in shape playing basketball. He was a special teams champion last year against Pitt, Boston College, and Rutgers. And by all means, he's on his way to doing it here again today. This one a squib kick by Bauman taken back at the 30 yard line by one of the up men. Brought up to the 40. Number 40, Ron Viscount. Ron Viscount, who's the starting fullback for Bowling Green, bringing it upfield. Ron Ellis, number 66, there to make the stop. There's a good look at Theron. Moved from the outside to inside linebacker position this season. The loss of Darnell Warren, and then the injury to Ted Kester. And they needed some help at inside linebackers, so they brought Ellis over, and he's made a great transition. From the 41-yard line. Looks as though Dakin is checking off at the line. Madly thrown ball intended over there for Ken Rankin. David Lockwood, senior out of Media, Pennsylvania, for the Mountaineers on the coverage. Rankin, the intended receiver on that play, sat up all of last season because of a knee injury. Came back in spring ball, still was not ready to go through contact, but went through the running portion of spring practice, and they feel he's back. He's another great athlete on this Bowling Green team, a two-sport performer. In fact, he holds the school's long jump record with a leap of 25 feet, 7 inches. Second down and 10. Intended receiver over there, Charles Edgerton and Theron Ellis back on the play. Once again, he was open there. The ball was just uh, poorly thrown. Just great pressure by the West Virginia defense. And, and Coach Kurlavich told me that Ronaldo, Ronaldo Turnbull has the greatest first step he's ever seen. Now, whatever that means, I don't know. But he said he has the be best first step he's ever seen. And Ronaldo is out there once again, playing on the right side of the Mountaineer defensive line. It's third down and 10. Back into Rankin. First down for Bowling Green. That's Rankin's first catch in a couple of years. Bowling Green will go without the huddle. One minute and three seconds to go here in the second quarter of play. West Virginia commanding this one, 41 to 7. And 
intended over there for Edgerton, and again, the Ron Ellis making the stop. West Virginia in a man coverage this, that time, and T. Ellis made a great play. It's awful difficult for a middle linebacker to cover a back, and he did a great job. Under a minute to go here in what has been a all West Virginia first half. Delay draw goes to Edgerton. He's tripped up. Skip Fuller, the nose guard for the Mountaineers, able to knock Edgerton off balance and Theron Ellis there to finish him off. Coach Shaw has said that when you move an outside linebacker to inside linebacker, in his experience, it has been very successful. T moving this fall because of some position changes has done a great job. Back and completes over the middle. That's his tight end, Kyle Hockman. That'll be another first down as the Falcons working on the clock. 27 seconds remain here in the second quarter. Clock stops on the completion for the first down. So Bowling Green knocking on the door again. Looking for their second score. Looking over there for Reggie Thornton. And apparently some miscommunication as to what the route was as Dakin threw the boundary and Thornton had not made a break over there. David Lockwood over on the coverage. Number 80, Kyle Hockman, is a very good player. Kind of reminds you of the Mark Rao type guy, 6'3", 225 pounds, was a transfer from NC State. He has real good hands. Last year in a Penn State game had seven or eight interceptions. Receptions, I might say. Yeah. <laughs> Seven or eight interceptions. Yes. He should have been on the other side of the ball. Timeout. You know, speaking of West Hockman, Virginia. as the Mountaineers call that a timeout. The second timeout. Hockman was a tremendous high school player in the state of Ohio. He played for his dad. And he That's a great player. Well, right? I'll tell you why. He's, without his dad's help or not, Hockman set an all-time Ohio high school record with 156 receptions. No other high school player in Ohio has ever caught that many high school or passes in the high school uh, career. Well, Kyle Hockman has his name in the Ohio record book. With 20 seconds to go here in the first half of play, Don Nealon has taken the headsets off. And I'm sure, headsets or not, he wants to see his defensive unit hold here and not allow a late touchdown. It would really be a shame, Tony, if we let him slide in here. Timeout was taken there by the Falcons as head coach Mo Ankney in his third season with the club Goes over some details with quarterback Rich Dakin. You can see that Bowling Green is a predominantly pass-oriented team. At this point, they really don't have much choice. Down 41 to 7. Uh, like we said in the introduction, we would see the ball 40 or 50 times a day. We're going to see it 60, 65 times a day. And the main reason being that they got behind so far so early. Second down and 10 from the West Virginia 17-yard line. Ball hauled in there by the tight end, Hockman. Brought down by Zippy Shear. And the Falcons will use another timeout. They'll have one remaining with 14 seconds to go here in the first half. The man with his hand on his chin is the Bowling Green head coach, Mo Ankney, in his third season with the club. Two years, he's brought them to a 10-win, 12-loss record. A season ago, Bowling Green finished up with a 5-6 and six mark. That was tied for, good enough for a tie of second place in the Mid-American Conference. The MAC Conference has traditionally has always been known to play good, solid football, particularly Bowling Green, Miami of Ohio. And some awful good coaches have come out of those two schools. Needless Bo to say, Don Nealon, right? Well, Don Nealon, Bo Schembechler was a one-time assistant right. at Bowling Green. You can go down the list. Larry Smith, the USC head coach, was with Nealon at uh, Bowling Green. And that's where Mo Ankney got his start. He followed around Larry Smith as Smith was making his steps into the coaching hierarchy. And Mo Ankney was the team's defensive coordinator. This week, Eight stops, excuse me, at Tulane, Ball State, Arizona. Then when the head coaching job came up at Bowling Green, when Denny Stoltz left for San Diego State, 
Ankeny came in and came back to the alma mater. Third down and six. You can expect pressure here for, from West Virginia with 14 seconds to go in the half. Timing pattern. Thornton, the intended receiver, and playing the tough coverage for the Mountaineers. Again, Coach Shaw using that philosophy that he has, go get them. Both linebackers blitzed through the timing off the pattern. They didn't have time to set it up. That was David Lockwood back on the coverage. Jason Zeller will come on to try the field goal with 11 seconds to go here in the first half of play. They'll spot it at the 20-yard line, so a 30-yard attempt for Zeller. It is no good. Zeller misses from 30 yards away, and the WVU defense holds. 41 to 7 with six seconds to go here in the second quarter. Lots of big emotional boost for those defenders out there. They had their backs up to that goal line, and they did not allow the score. You know, I read this week uh, Coach Anke's objectives for the season, and one of them was to beat Toledo. Uh, I don't know, does Toledo have a great team? or? Well, I guess when you get in that Mid-American Conference, everyone, they say it is a conference full of overall depth. Central Michigan expected to have a good team this year. Kent State has a good team. Dick Crum, former coach at North Carolina, has taken over at Kent State. Six seconds to go, first and ten, and the Mountaineers will run it out. Aaron Evans up to the 22-yard line, and that will do it. Halftime has arrived. The WVU Mountaineers pounding the Bowling Green Falcons through the first two quarters. It's 41-7 West Virginia. And welcome back to Mountaineer Field in Morgantown. As you can see, it has been an all-West Virginia first half of action. The Mountaineers getting off to a great start. A bobbled punt. West Virginia scored on it with a Willie Edwards conversion in the end zone. And West Virginia was on top, 7-0, 41-7. And John Garcia, this is exactly what West Virginia fans were hoping for. The Mountaineers did not seem to lose a beat from their last appearance in the Sun Bowl. No question about it, Tony. From the opening play, what we had talked about is go in, dominate, play good special teams, and would have an easy time. Give these kids confidence to the fourth quarter, it would have been a dogfight. It's going to be a long half for Bowling Green. WVU senior tailback A.B. Brown went right to work for the Mountaineers. He's healthy this season, and he showed us right from the start. Brown from four yards away. John, he just took it to the outside, and there was no one there to do anything about it. Well, like we said, Tony, it, it was just a foot race. Uh, A.B. with his great speed, option came down. There's no question about it. And the fullback, Craig Taylor, also got into the hit parade. This one from nine yards away. The offensive line doing a great job, and Taylor coming up with a 10-yard run. What can we expect to see in the second half from the Mountaineers? Well, probably plenty of reserves. West Virginia's got this one on top, 41-7. to Maybe a little Major Harris, but definitely Greg Jones, the transfer out of Miami. No question about that. It's all going to depend upon what... Coach Nealon got out of the first half that last year. He may want to go with Major one more series, but we're anxious to find out. 41 to 7, West Virginia leads it. Stay tuned. Second half action coming up on the Mountaineer Sports Network. And we welcome you back to Mountaineer Field. West Virginia on top by a score of 41 7. I'm Tony Caridi along with John Garcia. Halftime statistics, West Virginia totally dominating the picture. The Mountaineers with 14 first downs, throwing for 90 yards. Bowling Green with 104, but you can see they put it up into the air 26 times, just 9 of 26 in the passing department. The Mountaineers with 209 yards on the ground for a total of 299 yards of offense. One turnover by the Mountaineers, and the time of possession belongs to Bowling Green. But the score belongs to West Virginia, 41 to 7. Darren Fulton back deep to return the second half kickoff. Jason Zeller ready to put the ball into play. Good boot by Zeller and Fulton will not have a return. West Virginia will start off the third quarter of play first and ten from their 20 yard line. Well, he kicked the air out of that one didn't he? banged it. Charlie Bauman has put two in the end zone, forcing touchbacks for West Virginia, but that's the first one that Zeller put that deep. Head coach Don Nealon well on his way to becoming West Virginia's all-time winningest coach. 58 victories, 
ties him with Art Pappy Lewis and with 59, barring a miracle comeback, he'll have the all-time record here today. Greg Jones will start the second half at quarterback for West Virginia, and Eugene Napoleon will start it with a big run from scrimmage across the 30-yard line, may have the first down. Terry Wilson and Kyle Kramer there to make the stop as Eugene Napoleon gets his first carry of the 1988 season. This will be an excellent opportunity for Greg Jones to get some playing experience so later on down the road, if anything does ever happen and we need him, he'll have that experience under his belt. First down for the Mountaineers. Ten-yard pickup there by Napoleon. Again, Eugene gets the call, looking outside. Seven-yard pickup, and West Virginia starts the second half just like they did the first half of the game. Moving against that Bowling Green defensive front, Derek Carr making the stop there. The amazing thing about this is three tailbacks, and all three of them are big-time backs. I mean, all three can start at major college schools, and we have all three of them here at West Virginia. Napoleon will be West Virginia's front runner at the tailback position if you want to look ahead to next year. Both A.B. Brown and Andrew Johnson leaving. This time, the room is tough for Napoleon, but he turns it around. And he brings it close to that first down marker at the 40-yard line. This guy's extremely quick and elusive. Remember the 94-yard touchdown return he had against Maryland last year. He says that he wants to improve his pass receiving this season. Last year, he caught four balls, 56 yards. He says that he wants to become more of a factor as a pass catcher. He's picked up 19 yards on three carries here in the third quarter. Third down and one, just shy of the first down marker. Napoleon has the first down plus some more. Across the 45-yard line. Two tight end offense, and it's just rock them, sock them football. I mean, that offensive line just blew him off the ball. Eugene saw a hole and slid up in there. Aaron Evans and Daryl Mitchell come out of the lineup for West Virginia. Calvin Phillips and Granis Bell in as receivers. Rico Tyler, the fullback for the Mountaineers. Eugene Napoleon at the tailback position on first down. Jones with his first pass for the Mountaineers. Has his man. Kelvin Phillips to the 30-yard line. First down, West Virginia. Kelvin Phillips' first reception of the afternoon. Senior out of Boynton Beach, Florida. Had nine catches last season for 153 yards. And he's looking to be a key member of the WV receiving core this season. 25-yard pickup brought down there by the free safety, Kyle Kramer. There's a shot of Calvin, who, as mentioned earlier, appears in a picture with Granis Bell in this week's edition of Sports Illustrated. Inside, Rico Tyler. Wayne Crenshaw, the nose guard, making the stop. Did you see Rico this week? Bearing on ESPN, the feature on the Mountaineers, which Bino Cook ranked them number one. Bino provided the percussion for the Major Harris rap. That they use his bald head. They <laughs> I don't know how they do that. Four yard pickup at second down and six from the Bowling Green 26 yard line. Napoleon can't hold on. Bowling Green has the turnover. The option pitch could not be held on and Kyle Kramer from his free safety spot, pounces on it, and Napoleon coughs up the football as West Virginia was driving in there in Bowling Green territory. This is one thing that Greg Jones has to work on. He's more of a drop back guy, and the option is a big part of the West Virginia offense. Turnovers now evened up, one each. Falcons will have the ball from their 22 yard line, trailing it 41 to seven. Dakin remains in as the quarterback, despite going 9 of 26 in the first half. Fullback is Sean Daniels. Sean Daniels and Mike Fox there from his tackle spot to make the stop. The interesting thing about Mike Fox is when he was a freshman, he came to West Virginia 6'6", 214 pounds. Today, 6'8", 260. A 400 bench press also. Al, Al's done a great job with this guy. One yard gain at second down and nine. WVU defense 
first stringers are in there all the way across the board. Dakin, beautiful defensive play there by Elvoy Mays coming over the top of Ron Hurd at the 35-yard line. Elvoy Mays making his first start as a Mountaineer. Has been with the WVU program for two years. Came over from Pratt Community College and is a great man-on-man -man coverage person. Not only great coverage, but great pressure by Chris Parker, backing that offensive tackle up and getting his hands up in the air. They call him the Noy. Avoid, they call him the Noy. Third down and nine. Back in with a straight drop. As his man heard, but they'll be shy of the first down. Ball hauled in at the 35-yard line. Mays again on the coverage. But that'll bring up fourth down and two yards. Mountaineers have already blocked two Bowling Green punt attempts. As Chris Shell goes back deep. Again, you see that 10-man look. It would certainly put a, 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 make a uh, punter nervous. Bolton and Whitmore are on the corners. Here comes Whitmore. Hunter goes down. No flag, though. Bell from the 25. Rannis Bell rolls it up to the 38-yard line. West Virginia will take over. And so the fumble by Eugene Napoleon does not cost the Mountaineers. 10.31 to go. West Virginia on top, 41-7. to First and 10 from the WVU 38-yard line. Greg Jones in as the West Virginia quarterback. Eugene Napoleon, his sixth carry this afternoon, looking outside, and he's got room. Kyle Kramer makes the stop with some help there from Larry Lambright, inside linebacker. Granite's Bell, number one, made a great crackback block. That little guy came in there and really stuck it to that linebacker. Usually it's those wide receivers tiptoe when they want to come in on a linebacker, but he really stuck his head in there. Rannis Bell, the smallest of the WVU starters at 5 feet 9, 150 pounds. A marker is down on the play. So, soaking wet, right? Flipping against the offense. 15-yard penalty. Repeat, first stop. So the clipping penalty will bring West Virginia back to their 24-yard line. As one Mountaineer fan gets a bird's eye view. First down and 25. They'll replay the down. Rembert lines up as a receiver wide to the right. Napoleon again looking right. With a big block there from Reggie Rembert, he was able to scoot along to the 40-yard line. That'll almost... Bring him back to the original line of scrimmage. Tony McCorby, the left quarterback, finally made the stop. But watch Reggie Rembert, number 88 on the play. Great job on the toss sweep. Eugene sees the same and just keep running. Reggie does a great job up front. Screening off the defender. Second down and seven from the 40-yard line. Jones. Looking for a second pass, going for Rembert. He's got him. First down, Mountaineers into Bowling Green territory at the 44. This, this is Greg Jones' forte. Play action pass, stand in the pocket, and zip the ball in there. Boy, he really shoots the pill that time. It won't count, however. Penalty marker is down. Ineligible man downfield is the preliminary signal. So a clip and now another penalty coming up against West Virginia. Ineligible receiver downfield against the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat, second down. So a beautiful strike thrown by Greg Jones to Reggie Rembert. Does not go, and Grannis Bell will come in. There's spies from Cal Fullerton in that big balloon up there, Tony. <laughs> Do you think so? <laughs> the Titans playing southwest Louisiana this afternoon. Second down and 12 from the 35-yard line. 
Jones going deep for Grannis Bell. He's got his man beat. Bell to the 15. Yes, West Virginia does have a number two quarterback that can come in and do the job. Again, Greg Jones, like we talked about, loves to sit in that pocket and just throw that ball. So the Mountaineers, penalties or not, will not die on this drive. At the Bowling Green 15-yard line, Jones now 2 of 2 for 75 yards. Napoleon drags it just shy of the 10-yard line. Bowling Green has yet to be penalized with West Virginia's six penalties for 60 yards. Eugene Napoleon did not have a carry, although he got in for a couple of plays in the first half, but here in the early part of the third quarter, Napoleon has been getting the call. Second down and six from the Bowling Green 11-yard line. Rico Tyler bowls his way in like a bowling ball to the six-yard line. Doug Van Fossen and Dale McDonald there to make the stop. You know, West Virginia is very fortunate with, with Greg and Major Harris and the three tailbacks we have. All five of those guys are legitimate major college players, and they could play almost anywhere. Spot the ball right between the six and seven yard line. Jamie Lamont lines up as a receiver to the left. Reggie Rember to the near side. The option to the right. Napoleon with a hole. Won't make it. Down to the one yard line. Stop short of the goal line. Well, they got down this close on their first possession, John. The option tossed to the left, and Eugene could not hold on to it. This time they go right. The toss was right there, and Napoleon brings it just shy of the goal line. Super effort. He just almost got into the corner. Aaron Evans lines up as a wing back to the right. There he is, 36. Napoleon slips. Jones will keep. Just shy of that goal line. Broken play, but Jones turned it upfield. Napoleon, the intended ball carrier on the play, if you'll see it, he slipped on his footing as he started off. Toy Eason and Mike Holmes come over to make the stop on Greg Jones. Greg shows a lot of maturity here. Even though there's a broken play, he's still aware of where he's at, and he gets up the field and almost gets in. Timeout on the field. Don Nealon comes over. guarantee they weren't talking about the weather. Not at all. With a pat on the rump, Jones goes back with the play. Coach Neal pointed the crooked finger at him. From one yard away. Second down and goal. Napoleon. Eugene Napoleon joins the rest of the WVU backfield with success hitting the goal line. Frank Taylor's got a touchdown today, A.B. Brown with one, and now Eugene Napoleon scores it on a one-yard plunge, and the Mountaineers lead it by 40 points, 47 to 7. Bauman's extra point is there. West Virginia, 48, Bowling Green, 7. 6.41 to go, third quarter of play. Hey, don't forget, fans, that Mountaineer Sports Night will be coming to you next Friday evening on MSN Television. Host Woody O'Hara will talk with Coach Don Nealon and preview the Cal State Fullerton game. The new show is loaded with features and information giving fans a behind-the-scenes look at West Virginia football. Consult your local listings. Well, I'll tell you what, John Garcia, a very impressive drive by the WVU Mountaineers as they score their 48th point of the afternoon. Despite two 15-yard penalties in that drive, they were able to march the field and come away with a score culminating 
with a Eugene Napoleon dive from one yard away. Greg, show, Greg Jones showed a lot of maturity there, took the team, took control, and drove right down the field. That'll pay dividends, Tony, later on in the season. This is invaluable time. You can practice as much as you want during the afternoon sessions, but it's only during a real game situation that that's right. you become comfortable with the system, and that's what Greg Jones is doing. That's what Don Nealon is using him here in the second half for. And it's great for morale to go out and have some fun, right? You know, Jones came into the season saying, I know I'm the number two quarterback, and why not? With the great season that Major Harris had, as you can see, it took seven plays, sure. 62 yards. But he says, I also know that I'm only one play away from being in there. That's right. You never know what is going to happen. I.G. Thornton back deep to return for the Falcons. Charlie Bauman is ready. The thing about that is, Tony, is that he accepts that role and is ready to come in, and that, that's a big value to a team. Thornton from the five-yard line. Tries to work it right, and he's knocked short of the 25. So the Falcons will try it again. And there's Greg Jones. Mountaineer quarterback who came in last season, about this time last fall, and has been learning the WVU system ever since. Stands six feet, two inches tall, weighs 190 pounds, and he, according to Dwight Wallace, was the most impressive high school player he ever saw. That's Darren Fulton down for the Mountaineers, being attended to by trainers Greg Ott and John Spiker. Behind, Gre behind Greg is Chuck Levinas, who's playing a lot of specialty teams today. And Chuck's very much into, his, into this game. You've got to admire a 13 quarterback. It really keeps the emotion, and that's great for the team. Usually your 13 quarterback's more interested in, in the pretty blonde in the third row than on specialty teams run down under kickoffs. Yeah, there's no doubt Levinas has made a contribution to this team, although he's the quarterback by position. He has been a key performer on the special teams for the Mountaineers over the last couple of seasons. There's Darren Fulton. Sat out last year because of academic problems, but he's back into the Mountaineer lineup this season. Playing defensive back as a cornerback and also working on the special teams and punt and kickoff return coverages. The 24-yard line, first and 10 for the Falcons. Ball carrier is Mike McGee. Robert Pickett in on the stop. You know, John, Robert Pickett was a real question mark coming into this season for West Virginia. Of course, he had the swelling of the forehead last year that worried the WVU coaches, so they sat him out of spring practice, came back first day of contact in the fall, and immediately that head began to swell up again. But they've tried several different helmets, and they feel that they've got one that is working now. And that's a big, big plus for the WVU defense. Pickett, one of four Mountaineer captains this season. Back in. Intended over there for Kyle Hockman. The pass was there. Pickett was as well. And that'll bring up third down and eight. Super play. Man coverage by Robert Pickard and Coach Kralavich, the new outside linebacker coach who has switched from defensive line to outside linebackers, had told me that Pickett knows the coverages better than he does. You know, normally Bill Kralavich, up until this season, would spend his games in the press box, calling down the formations and the schemes. But this year, now that he's the outside linebacker coach, he's down on the field. Up until last season, he had been the defensive line coach. He'll be a big plus on the sidelines. You really need that emotion and enthusiasm that he has. On third and eight, Dakin will run for the first time this afternoon, and he's got room. Boss is over the 35-yard line, and he'll have the first down for the Falcons. So Dakin, who's been dropping back and either eating it or firing all afternoon, takes off and had the hole for the first down. That's Bob Shaw, West Virginia's new defensive coordinator. 29 years he's been in the coaching ranks. All over colleges, into the pro level as well. Spent some time in the USFL. So Don Nealon came out with a statement that Bob Shaw has forgot more football than most people ever know. First down and 10. Ball is caught there by McGee. Up to the 45 yard line. An eight yard pickup. That'll bring up second down and two. Elvoy Mays there to push McGee out of bounds. 
talking about Robert Pickard's, Pickett's injury, it's really a strange. I talked to John Spiker, one of the athletic trainers, and he said it's very unusual. He only knows of three since he's been associated with athletic training. Two at West Virginia and one at Louisville. They think they've got the helmet now to take care of it. They hope they do. Second down and two, and McGee on the carry. McGee, carry the ball. Close to the first down marker. Eric Lester in underneath the pile to make the stop, and he'll come off the field now. Mike McGee, six foot one inch, 230 pound senior from Dayton, Ohio. Had a great average per carry last season, 6.2 yards, but as mentioned earlier, could not hold on to it. Fumbled five times, and head coach Mo Ankeny found him a spot on the bench for most of the season because of that. And these guys are so big, they're fullback and tailback combination, 225, 230. It's awful difficult for those big guys to get to the perimeter, and that's why the majority of their game is between the tackles. He's run good for the first down, and so Bowling Green on the drive, putting together a couple of first downs. Four minutes and 53 seconds to go. Third quarter of play. West Virginia leads it 48 to 7. And you can see the Mountaineers have just dominated on the ground. Reggie Thornton in motion. Pressure is on. Defensive tackle for West Virginia, the senior out of Princeton, New Jersey, came from behind to make the stop. Talk about a guy that beefed up in the offseason. Pickett, I should say Marlette, weighs 285. He left at 250 pounds last May. So a very productive offseason. You can see beefed up is Pat Marlette, but still has the speed to make the stop on a rich Dak and keep. 450-pound bench presser, and I was at a barbecue last Sunday with him at one of the coaches' house. And you should have seen how many hamburgers he ate. <laughs> I was going to ask you, did he have his own steer? <laughs> Delay draw. This is Charles Edgerton and Basil Proctor, along with Steve Grant. Charles there to make the hit. Edgerton comes into the season. Senior or junior out of Columbus, Ohio, has a question mark. Has never had a full season at Bowling Green, bothered by injuries throughout his career. And the thing about Pat Marlett that is so impressive, he's a senior coming into his last season, and he's a role player. He knows he accepts his role as a backup tackle and, and does a good job. Third down and 17 facing the Falcons. Pressure is on. Dakin with a dump to Edgerton. Proctor makes the hit. Basil Proctor. Number 99. Played his first game as an out near. Came over to make the stop along with David Lockwood. And the fans give him out here defense and an ovation as Robert Pickett looks to the sidelines. Just a super job by that inside linebacker reading that screen and having a feel for it. Really gets up in there. Great job. Rannis Bell standing at his 25. Chris Shell to punt from the 22 yard line. Mountaineers play the return. Bell charges from the 31. Reaches the 33-yard line. That's where West Virginia's offense will start from. First and 10 from the 33. The Mountaineers lead it 48 to 7. 2.21 to go. Third quarter of play from Mountaineer Field. Greg Jones staying in as West Virginia's quarterback. He has engineered one score here in the third quarter of play. Andrew Johnson in, his first carry of the second half. Up across the 42. Keith Payson to make the stop. Napoleon was featured in the first series here in the second half, and now Andrew Johnson in to get his share of carries. There's the Mountaineer defensive coaches. Bill Kerlavage with the baseball hat turned backwards along with Pat Marlette pouring the water over his head. Skip Fuller, Steve Grant. Four-yard pickup. Inside handoff goes to Aaron Evans, and he drags a couple of tacklers. Shy of that first down marker. 
one of the things that makes this three tailback situation a, a great combination is that they can roll these guys and they get a break. Those inside linebackers have to stay in there every series for Bowling Green, and they really take a pounding. Take it the easy way. That's Darren Fulton. We saw walking off earlier. He's got a couple of ice packs back there on the calf muscles. Apparently, he was cramping up. Dive over the top, and that's a first down for the Mountaineers. Toy Eason making the stop, but not before Andre Johnson took the up and over. Andre with 19 yards on eight carries this afternoon. Senior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, played at Stranahan High School. He enjoys and enjoyed West Virginia so much, he told one of his friends from his high school team, Harold Ortiz, that he should also consider West Virginia, and he did. Remember, knocked out of bounds at the 39-yard line, maybe the 41-yard line. Knocked out there by Tony McCorvey. So Rembert comes in his first game as a Mountaineer and makes an immediate impact. McCorvey, who was over to make the stop, shaking up on the play. The Mountaineers continue their home stay and West Virginia takes on the Titans of Cal State for the next Saturday. This is one of the, the first seasons in quite some time that West Virginia has had four captains, Tony. Uh, it's probably one of the most emotional little experiences that I've ever been through. We, the team got together here last Sunday, and I know years past, Coach Neal, we always voted on it, and they, we have it here at night, and they flash the names on the scoreboard, and it really brings the team together. It has been an afternoon that won't soon be forgotten by the WVU football team. West Virginia leads it 48-7, to and for all the Mountaineers, all you do, this bud's for you. Greg Jones off to a strong start as WVU's quarterback, three of three here in the second half for 84 yards. The difference between Jones and Harris, not only in their style of play where Jones is a more drop back style passer and Harris is more of a scrambler, but physically. Harris and Jones almost the same height. Major is six feet, one inches tall, 207 pounds. Jones is 6'2", 190. So he's got about 17 pounds and another inch on the major, and he's more of a lanky player, and that's one reason why he's more of the drop-back type quarterback. The thing about Major is that his arm is so deceiving. Uh, he's not in the stature of a, a Danny Marino or a Jim Kelly or a Doug Williams, but he still can sit back there and really rifle that ball, and that's one thing I was surprised about. He can still flip that ball 65 yards. 48 seconds remaining here in the third quarter of play. Tony Caridi along with John Garcia. Christian Miller handling the spotting chores in the box this afternoon. John Antonick providing the statistics along with Miles Montgomery. Well, McCorvey gets walked off. And that'll bring in Dave Jacobs at the left cornerback position. Second down and one. And the toss goes to Andre Johnson. Good block, room to go. Johnson over the 40, he's got the first down. Steve Wilborn and strong safety Terry Wilson there to make the stop as Johnson sliced his way for the first down. That's just old time hockey, toss sweep and let's go get him. Scott Parker in there for West Virginia at a tackle position. Johnson again, a slicing runner, shy of the 35-yard line as the clock continues to wind down. 17 seconds to go here in the third quarter of play. Dwayne Crenshaw credited with the stop for Bowling Green. Greg Dykes comes into the Mountaineer huddle, another junior college receiver. Spent last season at Hutchinson Junior College in Kansas. We received an All-American position on the first team. Clock winds down, the quarter comes to an end. West Virginia leads it after three, 48 to seven. Don't go away. Well, the offensive jets cool a bit in the third quarter for West Virginia. The Mountaineers scoring one touchdown, leading it 48 to seven as we begin our final quarter of play. Second down and seven from the 36 yard line in Bowling Green territory. Under Johnson. 
slowed down and pushes ahead. Knocked out by Toy Eason. Eason, a sophomore outside linebacker, considered the best outside linebacker on the Bowling Green team. You know, underplayed in all, in 11 games last year, and uh, he's done a great job almost every time he's gone in there. You can see the dominance by West Virginia in the rushing department. Total offense, 436 to 161. Third down and three. Again, it's Johnson outside. Down to the 21-yard line. That play, you could see the sand-filled surface here on the Omni turf scoot up as Johnson was dragged down. The sand flew up. Kyle Kramer, the free safety there to make the stop on Undra. First down for the Mountaineers. Under his freshman year against Temple, he ran for 206 yards. Had a great performance. That's, that ranks as the fifth overall total rushing. Fifth best afternoon? Yes. By a Mountaineer back. It was in the rain. West Virginia's Mountaineer for this season. First and 10 from the 20 yard line. Aaron Evans the carry. And he brings it up to the 15 yard line. Todd Currents there to make the stop. So that'll bring up second down and five from the Bowling Green 15 as the Mountaineers look to crack the 50 mark. Leading at 48 to seven. Again, it's Aaron Evans, and he's got the first down. That'll bring up first down and goal for West Virginia. Evans, the sophomore running back out of Richmond, Virginia. His dad, Hugh, is one of the veteran NBA officials. That was a, a great, strong effort, twisting and turning and slashing, trying to get every inch. We'll see a lot of him in the future. First and goal from the six yard line. Andre Johnson's got the room and the score. Andre makes a great move. He has great vision. He's able to, to slip back there and find the seam. And gets in for the touchdown. So under Johnson's got his first touchdown of 1988 from six yards away. West Virginia leads it 54 to seven. Bauman on to make it 55. And he does. 13 minutes and three seconds to go here from out near field. West Virginia leads it 55 to seven. Fullerton, one week from today. Students have been pretty quiet today, haven't they, Tony? Well, I thought they were quiet up until our last break. They've got a well of a cup fight going on upstairs. <laughs> Some things never change. Well, most of them are down Sunnyside already. I don't know what's going on. 13 minutes and three seconds to go as Bauman prepares to tee it up. No, that won't be Charlie Bauman. In fact, Don Nealon's going to make a replacement there. Charlie was getting tired. He's going to put in Brad Carroll. The heir apparent to Charlie Bauman. Bauman's the senior. Carroll will get a crack as the fans begin to filter out of Mountaineer Field. That's Reggie Thornton back deep to return. Carroll works it to the near side and like Charlie Bauman, he puts it in the end zone, but this time Thornton will come out from two yards in. Reaches the 20 yard line. Alex Shook. Red shirted freshman out of John Marshall High School in there to make the stop. West Virginia native. Again, like we said earlier, Tony, it's easier for that right leg kicker to kick to the right because he has that range of motion and the follow through. And you'll be able to see that ball go deeper. But when he kicks to the left, it's a little bit more difficult, almost like a uh, golfing. Dak 
Deccan looking left, pressure on and Deccan down. Skippy Fuller out of Somerville, New Jersey from the nose guard position came straight ahead and make the stop on Rich Deccan. Play action pass, Deccan's looking, he's getting a lot of pressure. Once he makes that undecisive move, it's too late. Loss of eight yards on the play, second down and 18. 12 21 to go here in the ball game. The Mountaineers leading it 55 to 7. McGee breaks free. Basil Proctor had a hand on him, but could not make the stop. McGee split through and brings the ball up to the 23 yard line. Official attendance this afternoon, 53,515. And Don Nealon is on his way to set the record. Most wins by any West Virginia coach. 59 after this is over. Breaking the mark of Art Pappy Lewis. Third down and seven. Back and floats one out there to his fullback discount. They've got the first down. I'm kind of surprised that they still have Dakin in there, to tell you the truth, Tony. Uh, you know, the score's 55 to 7. Uh, the game's, in all practical purposes, is over. Let's get our backup guy a little bit of work. Eric Smith is the backup for the Falcons. We've seen him as the holder on the field goal attempt from Jason Zeller that was no good. First down and 10, the Falcons. McGee, again trying the middle of that West Virginia defensive front. E.J. Wheeler from his inside linebacker position came around to scoot him down and make the stop along with Skippy Fuller. A look at West Virginia quarterback Greg Jones. He's engineered two touchdowns here in the second half of play. His first action is a Mountaineer after sitting out last year after transferring from the University of Miami. He's looked impressive, John. He certainly has. One thing we'll notice ne starting next week, you'll see little Mountaineer uh, muskets in the back of their helmets for big plays and big lock licks and crunch blocks. And who sets it? Here's Zippy Shear. Flag goes down. Zippy Shear came from behind. The pass was intended there for Ron Hurd. The ball will go to West Virginia. And may I add, a Mountaineer musket for interceptions also. Dave Lockwood came from underneath to pick up that loose ball. You Straight. can see the ball overthrown Shear there, playing the free safety position. The ball will pop loose. You saw the flag from across. There's Lockwood, 41, diving in, and he comes up with the fumble recovery. So the West Virginia defense with their first interception of the afternoon. What that defensive back will do when he makes an interception, he'll yell Oski or Bingo or Sally or something to let the defensive line aware of, hey, we've got one, let's go get it, get it in the end zone now. Holding will be the penalty and it will go against West Virginia. The Mountaineers Holding will retain. Against the receiver, against the defensive team after they intercepted the ball. So in other words, the possession will belong to West Virginia if that had occurred prior that to the interception. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the defense. First down, West Virginia. So to sort it out, they'll take the holding penalty, mark that off, and then they'll add on an unsportsmanlike call against Bowling Green. And when that's all done with, West Virginia will have the football at the 33-yard line in Bowling Green territory. Zippy, he's another uh, great team player. Came to West Virginia out of St. Francis High School here in Morgantown, a walk-on. And I mean, that's really good to see a kid get an interception like that. He was a great high school running back. In fact, he led the state in scoring in his senior season. Napoleon slicing. Crosses over the 25-yard line. 
Eugene Napoleon has one score in the ball game. It came early on in the third quarter. Knocked down there by Dale McDonald and strong safety Terry Wilson. Zippy was the runner up uh, for the Kennedy Award here in West Virginia. That's right. A business major. Seven yard pickup by Napoleon at second and three. Back keep on the play as Jones ran through the option. Alex Shook, redshirted freshman out of John Marshall High School, getting his first collegiate carry. I would have to think Don Nealon would be in, in. He's never happy, but I think he would be <laughs> at least a little bit impressed with how his team played this afternoon. Again, Shook is the ball carrier. As West Virginia seems content just to chew the clock up. Nothing fancy. Shook brings it up to the 15-yard line. Knocked down by Larry Lambright. Well, that's one thing he always told us, Tony. Is you enjoy this game until 5 o'clock tomorrow. After 5 o'clock, it's time to get on to the next one. So I'm sure immediately as soon as he steps off this field, he's going to be thinking about Cal Fullerton. Charlie Fedorko lining up as a receiver out to the left. Charlie getting his first action this afternoon. Virginia reserve running back Barry Browning out of Madison Scott High School, Southern West Virginia. He knows himself a hole. Dale Wolfley is still in there, provided a great hole. Now here's a guy who, who's a second teamer, but is a great offensive lineman, a, a 400 pound bench presser. We just outman Bowling Green. Mountaineers have it. First and goal from the seven. Alex Shookin at the fullback position, Barry Browning at the tail. And it's Browning again, up to the five-yard line. Browning was uh, very impressive in spring practice. Very impressive. Good ball carrier, strong kid. You know, he's as strong as A.B. Brown in certain exercises, and that's saying something. They've got a tote board in the Mountaineer weight room listing all of the accomplishments. I don't see your, na your name on there anymore, no, Tony. not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Chuck Levinas in as the Mountaineer quarterback. Ball carrier is shook inside the five-yard line. Forward motion will keep him inside the five as he's driven back. You know, the, the accomplishments, accomplishments that they've made in the weight room is pretty much indicative of the success that they've had here. The weight room is about twice the size as it was four years ago. Third and goal from the two-yard line. Perry Browning in for the score. Touchdown, West Virginia. Perry Browning from a couple yards out. His first touchdown as a Mountaineer. We talked a little bit earlier about uh, the possibility of West Virginia overlooking Bowling Green. One emphasis that Coach Nealon has done is he's blocked out every game on the schedule in the locker room except Bowling Green. Next week we'll take off Cal Fullerton and we'll keep the rest of them blocked out. So you, you keep focused on that one game only and take them one game at a time. West Virginia leads it 61-7 to with 7 minutes and 23 seconds to go in the ballgame. Charlie Bauman's extra point attempt. Straight through in West Virginia. Has a 62-point afternoon with 77 minutes and 23 seconds to go. Tell you what, Gar, you'd have to go a ways back in the Mountaineer record book to see when they scored 62 points on the last, last time they scored 62 points. You may have to add a couple games together.